Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cabaret Secrets. My name is Gary Williams, and today I'm joined by Hamish Ravel, one of my favourite musical directors. I always say that when I'm talking to musical directors, but he really is one of my favourites. Hamish, welcome to Cabaret Secrets. Mr. Gary Williams, thank you so much. You're too so kind. you reminded me the other day that we met, what, a long time ago? 2000, the end of 2000 on the Mercury. Yeah. yeah. A celebrity ship. 13 years ago. 13 years ago, and we're <laughs> we still here. at sea too long. <laughs> <laughs> and that was your first? My first one, yeah. Still here, still enjoying it, still loving it. Yeah. And it was quite an eventful uh, cruise, wasn't it, that? Because we nearly sank, amongst <laughs> other things. <laughs> they actually reported on CNN that we had sunk. Is that true? They did. Well, yes. uh, for people listening, they don't know what we're talking. We're digressing <laughs> we a little didn't. bit, but we were we were we were sailing out of Buenos Aires. I'll Buenos never forget Aires, this. The and a long uh, channel. We got yes. caught in a hurricane wind. Hundred mile an hour wind. Hundred mile an hour so wind. Long. And it, it. I mean, it was without going to all the details now. This is for another podcast. But it was pretty. I thought I was going to die, and I'm not joking. <laughs> is this encouraging people to go? <laughs> <and see? laughs> but it's never happened since. And we're still it's here. Never again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But well, it was, it was come a come and sail. Yeah, please enjoy your cruise. It was a, it was a hair raising was, uh, thing, was, wasn't yeah. it? That was my first cruise, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was the first cruise, and and uh, since then, never ever in thirteen years. So it's all good for people out there who haven't cruised. So the weather is one thing that we have to contend with every now and again. The other thing that gives you a bumpy ride as a musical director is the odd dodgy act who comes on ill-prepared and <laughs> not really ready for what yeah. you know for the job in hand. Tell me the kind of acts that you love to work with. Well, from a, a from the the musical standpoint, what we appreciate and what a lot of acts will overlook is investing in the charts. The charts they bring on are so important and there are certain arrangers which are very strong, certain arrangers which aren't as strong. And I know as a new act that must be a challenge to try and find out who arranges properly for four horns. I know it is challenging within the cruising industry because should you go to a Holland America you've got one horn some um, uh, certain cruise lines are using three horns, four horns. So there is that challenge from a new act standpoint. Who arranges my charts? Am I going to get someone that arranges for a big band and just reduces it? Now, that arranger may be amazing at arranging for big band. But what often happens, you'll see a name which we know, which arranges for big band, and it's reduced to four horns, and there are stages or there are corners which are cut. Are you, when you say reduced, do you mean that it's a, an actual big band arrangement and the artist has, is just taking out trumpet one, sax yes. one and all that? Yes. Or do you mean that the arrangers rearranged it for four horns? Sometimes there is a combination of that. We will see acts and it's clear that they've pulled out the first trumpet, first alto sax, first tenor. And from it doesn't a, work, does it? No, it won't. And um, well, you know what it is. What? Actually, it kind of works if you yes, if you've got works. very low expectations. And let's yes. face it, a lot of the the guests that are watching a show won't. It's one of those won't things really where yeah, through. they'll think uh, it sounds, sounds a bit okay. funny every now and again. You yeah. know, it's okay. Yeah, and they'll yes. say, oh, that band sounded good. But but it's when you put if if the following night there was yes. a guy came on with really good with proper, proper charts, charts yeah. they'd go wow that was sounded sensational so it's the kind of thing that a lot of you can get away with a little bit you can you'll you completely can lose agree. the respect of the band but you yes. can get away with it yes you can but it's it's really not the way forward yeah i mean what i think in the long run if you're planning to do this say you have a five to ten year plan what a lot of the acts i've seen have do uh, uh, will do who are new they're like, okay, we don't have enough money now, so we'll invest just a little bit um, and buy cheaper charts. Like which stock aren't charts. That, yeah, which aren't that cheap. Because you'd be surprised there isn't a lot of price difference between really well-written charts. And some, I mean, I played a chart about a month ago. The person was quoted at, at nearly 3000 for a medley. And wow, must have been some medley. But... It was a six to eight hundred dollar chart. Yeah. And as, as a musician, you can see that. I know, um, like you said, from the audience standpoint, it's not critical. They'll hear something. It sounds okay. 
it will be passable. But the next night, if you have a proper arranger, four horns sound like eight. Yes. And that is not to do with the musician. Well, it is the musicians, but that's what a good chart can do. I think it's also we're mindful that it's a pretty big investment for an act that's it got to put expensive. together maybe, yes. you know, two 50-minute shows worth, say, and maybe yes. a few spares just in case. That's maybe 25, 30 charts or yes. so. Yes. And if they're spending, you know, three, four, five, six hundred dollars yes, uh, per absolutely. chart, that's a big yes. investment. Yeah. So you can understand why people want to cut corners. But yes. it's it is if they if they're planning on being in the game for a long time, yeah. it's a false economy, yeah. isn't it? One thing I would also recommend is why not invest? Okay, so you have say nine to fourteen charts in your set. Invest the money you would in three to four charts, and it is so much easier to give a band a rhythm section lead sheet and have one of the saxes improvise over it. Mm. That makes so much sense, more sense than buying a cheap chart mm. which you're still overpaying for. So you, you mean you mean then that they'll say three or four things which are keen to their opening, something in the middle and they're yes. closing, they'll have yes. a range, probably spend the money there. Yes. And you're saying that for a lot of, they can sprinkle the set with basically a, 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 the rhythm playing, piano, bass, drums Absolutely. and guitar and one horn just yeah. riffing a little bit. And that is one way uh, to save money, but you're not really cutting on the quality of the music. And you could almost just, because what you're talking about is for, for these kind of bands that, 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 that we're, we're working with on ships, yes. they can just get a, a fake book, a lead sheet, a right? A fake book. And like if you've got the, yeah, uh, yeah, a, fake book, a fake sheet uh, for a standard, and that yes. would, particularly if it's something like a standard, like if I was going to do Moon River or Autumn Leaves. Say, or if you're doing a Misty or a Moon River or a My... F um, 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 well, 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 it's Misty, My Funny Valentine. Had to be you, all balance. those standards. You don't necessarily need four horns playing fortissimo yes, yes, yes. all the time. Yes. So for the ballads, one thing I would recommend to new headline acts, to new ones, just use a lead sheet yeah, that's right. and have one sax and say thinks um, Stan gets or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And a nice bossa nova yeah. number or something. And actually, even if you did have the money, sometimes it's a nice idea to put yes, something absolutely. like that in the set, right? Yeah. And I like what you're saying, that to save money uh, at the beginning by having a few of those in the set yes. and then invest the money in, in some yeah. really good quality charts. And, as, and also, uh, we, we can buy stock charts, we can yes. find and arrange it. Now, I know you're a fan of David Carter's writing. Yes, he writes very, very well. Well, and I've, I've, I've used David for years. Yes, I've played his charts over the years, and he gets it when it comes to writing for four horns. And the nice thing about David is that anybody, I, might, I actually got David's contact details on my website. If you yes. just search on my website for arranging, yes. there's another guy called Paul Campbell that I use. Yes. And the, the thing about David is that he has a list of his, his own stock charts. Yes. So a great way to get started. Yes. I don't know what he charges, but it's not much. But they're very so, good. And you can just go through, go to his website, look at a list and think, well, I know that, I know that, yes. I know that. Yes. So, and of course, they're standard, but if yes. you're going to sing Fly Me to the Moon or Under My Skin or New York, New York, or yes. All I Ask of You or yes. Memory or, you know, one of the standard numbers that yes. everybody does, you, you might as well buy it off the shelf from and him. And very good. So arrangements is obviously a yes. key thing, and, and, and every musical director says that to me. It's arrangements, arrangements, arrangements. The yes. easiest way to make the band happy is to have good arrangements. The easiest way to upset everybody is to have shoddy <laughs> arrangements. What are the elements that make a good act work well from the audience perspective? You sit there watching it happen. Yeah. What do you think, wow, this is, a, this is a good act. They love this guy. One thing I have noticed on a shorter cruise, say you're doing a seven-day cruise or three- and four-day cruises, you can't really get away with as much as if you're doing a longer cruise, like on a world cruise. Within world cruises, where people are on for longer stretches, mm -hmm. as a headline act, you can try new things or things which not everyone will know. One thing I have noticed with the shorter cruises where people are strictly coming uh, for, for five to seven days or even three, four day cruising, they want to hear stuff they know. So the Frank Sinatras are always going to work. Mm. Um, I know some acts like to do new things, okay, try new things from a brand new musical. What I would recommend is think of the length of the voyage you're doing because on a longer voyage, people see more acts so they are more willing to accept 
something not so mainstream. My parents just did a world cruise with yes. P&O and they're on the ship for four months. Yes. So you imagine week in and week out, they're seeing a different singer, a different yes. comedian and a different speciality act, a different instrumentalist. Yes. So when it first starts, the first two or three weeks, everybody's, wow, the act, wow, it's so great, yes. the entertainment. After the third month, they're like, do we have to hear Ness and Dormer again? And you can be one of the best acts, and that is the challenge with a longer cruising. And actually, it's um, a plus then for the, to, to, for the acts that want to try new things, because everyone's going to say, "Thank, wasn't that a breath of fresh air? We didn't different. have to listen to my way again." Yes, because on those longer cruises, like I said, on the shorter cruises, people want to hear the Sinatras, they want to hear the big numbers, the ones they can hum. Mm -hmm. Okay, like a teacher uh, years ago said, if they can hum it, they'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. If they know it. On the longer cruises, the world voyages, like you know, the clientele is slightly different in the sense that they've seen a lot of stuff on land. Mm. Okay, a world voyage is not cheap, so mm -hmm. they've seen a lot of high quality acts on mm. land as well. Mm -hmm. So they don't mind the variety. Mm. And it's easier to get away with new things. This is from a new musical, this is from something I've wrote. It's easier, and I would recommend that to new acts starting, look at the length of your voyage. Mm. I mean, obviously, as you need to have your stock, your, um, your show. But if you're thinking, OK, I like this tune, it's new, not everyone knows it, with the longer cruises, you can probably get away with it, and they will appreciate it more than on a shorter cruise. One of the things I've noticed that I have to be aware of when I go on different ships is looking yes. not only at the demographic, but for me I'm always very aware of the nationalities on board, and it does change, particularly with some of the bigger international companies with Royal Caribbean. Yes. That, you know, you can depending where the ship's coming out of, and I think is the key. Now sailing out of Hamburg. That's right. So then you, you get obviously a lot of Germans. We need to change how we're thinking. Historically, it was between England and New York. Yes. So you knew your clientele, and it has been that way on Cunard since I can remember. What is, uh, what is happening now, you'll find the Queen Mary too, is now sailing out of Hamburg. Mm. So even from a production show standpoint, from especially a comedian standpoint, that's even more of a Big challenge. Big challenge, isn't it? Huge challenge. You need to be thinking of those things. I know it's a lot to think of, but that's the reality of where I feel the industry, especially for Kuna, that's where it's going. Do you think the cruise industry is looking good? Are things buoyant? Uh, do you think the future looks good? Absolutely. This is the only industry I know which is still expanding. It's amazing, Everywhere isn't it? Everywhere on the planet is closing up. I look at Sydney work-wise. I mean, I worked in Sydney in, in, in the early 90s to 2000. And it's not just me, but people I used to watch who played on television, who, who you know, were the people I looked up to. Mm. There's, that work isn't there anymore. Mm. Ships are still being built. Mm. and Big they, ones. Yeah, they are building big ones. And even though, as, as a musician, there's always the fear of, are oh, they going to cut the band, they've lowered the band. But even, you know, with that, there are still positions for musicians which are opening up every day. For a singer, for a multi-instrumentalist, which is, which is going to cruise, there are more ships coming out. Yeah, I think uh, somebody told me, I don't know if it's true, but Royal Caribbean have on their books over 5,000 entertainers that they use, you know, yeah. and obviously not all at the same time, but yes. that's a lot of people yes. and God knows how many musicians yes. that are, were all being given great employment in yes. a great environment and given an audience that wants to see and hear what we're doing. Yeah. You know, I love cruising because there is the stability financially. Mm. Um, and of course, you know, I mean, you get to see the world, you get to work with great acts, etc. I think you have to be of the right temperament. The, the, of course, you spend a lot of time away from home. It's, yes. it is a, it's quite a, there's, it, there are a lot of rules involved. Obviously, yes. the safety involved, people have got to behave themselves. Yeah. But I think if you're of the right temperament and the right frame of mind, it's a fantastic career, isn't it? For any of us, whether you're musicians, a singer, a speciality act, a comedian, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity, I think. Anyway, I'm so grateful Absolutely. for it. Yeah, I agree as well. I wouldn't give it up for anything. I mean, just the experiences I've had. Um, one nice thing I have seen over the years, I believe the standard of musicianship and the standard of headline acts has improved. Um, lots of people thought with the expanding industry it would actually lower the standard, mm. but it seems to be quite the opposite. Mm. I mean, I can only speak for 
of the Queen Victoria and the Queen Mary II within the Cunard group uh, for the last two, three years I've been with, with, uh, with those two. But it seems that the standard is higher than it was when we started. I agree, or, I agree. Or, or when I started 13 years ago. Yeah, yeah, you were rubbish then. Still am. <laughs> I'm talking about other musicians. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm not including them. <laughs> oh, you're 100% correct there. Thank you for listening to this Cabaret Secrets podcast. If you've got any comments or questions, please visit cabaretsecrets.com where you'll also find details of the Cabaret Secrets book, an indispensable guide on how to create your own show, travel the world, and get paid to do what you love.